Welcome to Age Friendly Cleveland. My name is Mary McNamara, and I'm the director of the Cleveland Department of Aging. Across our country, we have what we call an aging network of services because no one division of government, agency, hospital system, or faith-based group provides all the services an older adult might need to age successfully. As examples, some older adults may need transportation or in-home health care, modifications to the home, or resources for staying engaged after retirement. It is our hope with this Age Friendly Cleveland series that you might learn more about the resources right here in Cleveland. This next segment is about one of the trusted agencies we work closely with every day to make Cleveland an age-friendly city. Welcome to another episode of Age Friendly Cleveland. I'm Enrique Correa, and I'm here with the Executive Director of LEAP, Melanie Hogan. Melanie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm going to give you an easy question right off the bat. What does LEAP stand for? Sure. LEAP stands for Linking Employment Abilities and Potential. Tell us a little bit about your organization and what you do and how you help seniors. Sure. We actually work with people with disabilities, and disability runs the gamut of all ages and as you know many people who are aging are also growing into disabilities so our organization was founded 37 years ago by a woman who had a spinal cord injury as a teenager as a result of an automobile accident and what she wanted more than anything was to stay in her home and stay in the community and so she systematically began developing services that would benefit people with disabilities how does someone qualify for services most of our services are um, provided through other agencies, so we are a vendor of state agency um, programs, so individuals would come to us as a referral from somebody else. Another thing is, what does independent living mean, and what is that philosophy all about? Sure. It, you know, most people have a choice in their life about where they're going to live, where they're going to work, how they're going to engage in the community. People with disabilities typically don't have those choices because there are many barriers that are preventing them from accessing community services the way you and I would. So the idea of independent living is really about letting people with disabilities know what's available to them in the community and helping them achieve their goals of full community inclusion. You also have a center for independent living. Tell me about that. Right, the, the center is a place where people can come identify what goals they have in their lives and we work with them to eliminate those barriers whether it's a barrier to living in the community to employment to accessing community benefits uh, transportation and housing so it's not a place where people come and live it's a place where people come and get problems solved one of the unique things that i see about your program and your organization is that you help people with disabilities find a job right tell me about that Sure, so 65% of the population of people with disabilities are unemployed. It's not because they don't want to work, it's because the community doesn't understand that they have skills and talents to share and employers typically don't know how to reach out to that community. It's the largest untapped labor pool in the country actually. So we help people with disabilities build their skills, identify what type of work opportunity they want. We work with employers to teach them how to recruit um, hire, train, and retain people with disabilities. And we make that match and then help, help both sides, both the employer and the employee, become successful. How does this enrich their lives? You know, because oh they want gosh. to work, right? Well, yeah, I mean, most of us are identified by what we do for a living. Um, so working and living in the community really is fulfilling basic fundamental life goals. And our agency really believes that it's not the disability that prevents people from achieving those goals, but it's our, our attitudes and our barriers in our communities. So um, achieving your goal is pretty pretty uh, amazing. Of Exactly, it's an accomplishment. It makes, and it makes you feel better about yourself when right. you don't have to depend and you can be more independent. Right, exactly. Um, you have an interesting program called the Home Transition Team. Tell me about that. Sure. It's a nursing home transition program, and in Ohio it's called the Home Choice Program. It helps people with disabilities 
or seniors move from an institutional setting like a nursing home back into the community. They have to be on Medicaid and they have to have had at least a 90 day nursing home stay. Uh, if they qualify for that, then we work with the individual to transition back to community. And that could be of any age. So we've transitioned babies back home and we've really? transitioned you know, up to 90 year olds who want to leave the nursing home and go back into the community. We've helped over 350 people get back into an environment in which they're feeling safe, comfortable, and uh, have a better quality of life. Exactly, exactly. Um, accessibility. You make modifications to someone's home or apartment. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about that. It, I, it's more, again, giving that person independence. Absolutely it is. Uh, the biggest need for making a home accessible and letting a senior or a person with disability stay in that home longer is ramps wider doorways, um, better lighting, uh, no slip rugs to prevent falls, um, transitioning over doorways so they're not tripping over sm small steps in the doorways. A big part of living independently though is assistive devices, so magnifiers, assistive listening devices, large print items, push button telephones that are very large. Things like that really make a difference between being dependent on somebody else and living your life as independently as you want to live. Someone with a new disability, and you have a caretaker, mm -hmm. how can a caretaker find out what programs and resources are available to them and how does your program help them? Because a lot of people don't know what's out there that's available to them. Yeah, and there's so much out there, so it's, that is a big challenge. Our goal, first and foremost, is to work with the individual with the disability and understand what their goals are and what they want. So the first thing I would say is that the person should not be defining themselves as a person, as a disability first, right? You're still a person, regardless of what has happened to you in your life circumstances, you're still the person you are, you still have your wants and dreams and desires. And so we work with folks to make sure that they're not giving that up to manage their disability. Secondarily, then, we work with them and their caregivers to find the resources in the community that meet their needs, whether it's employment, whether it's having care at home, whether it's modifying their home, um, finding transportation. There's a whole variety of things. So we have an information referral um, assistance program. They can call and tell us what they're looking for. Um, I, I think the main thing I would say is be true to yourself and don't give up hope. What is that number? Oh, it's 216-696-2716 uh, and ask for the information and referral line. All right. Another thing you have is ADA Cleveland. Sure. And what role does LEAP play with ADA Cleveland? Um, in 2014, the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, was turning 25. And it is really the basic civil rights law for people with disabilities that ensures or should be ensuring equal access and leveling the playing field for people to be included in community and to be able to work and to be able to live independently. There's a lot more work that still needs to be done as a result of that. And so in preparation for that 25 year celebration, we gathered a group of 19 organizations, um, like-minded missions to really start a, a path of educating the community about the Americans with Disabilities Act, celebrating the lives of people with disabilities, and getting the community to engage with us um, about just embracing people. Your organization also advocates for people with disabilities. Tell me about that. How helpful is that to these people? Sure. I mean, I think it's very helpful. Um, one in four people have a disability, so it's not those people um, that you might have a sort of a stereotypical idea of what disability means. It's people with diabetes, people with cancer, people with heart disease, people with vision loss and hearing loss, people mm -hmm. with dementia people who have emotional problems or depression or anxiety. So it's the whole gamut of our community. Right. And I think the first thing that we have to realize is that disability is the natural part of the human existence. So if we embrace the concept that we are all going to have a disability at some point in time, and we want to live the best quality of life that we can, then we all have to be engaging and making sure that we know what we want, we can identify that, we know how to self-advocate for ourselves and, and make sure that people are assisting us in achieving those goals. 
And then on a policy level, on a federal level, on a state level, and even on a local government level, making sure that we have the disability voice at the table so that we're not forgotten when policies are being written and rules are being made about things that impact our quality of life. One thing that everyone seems to do these days, everyone wants to volunteer. They want to help. How can they volunteer to help your organization and just people interested in volunteering? What could they do? Sure, we have a recreation program that runs uh, almost seven nights a week. It's called Quantum Leap. We serve over 400 people a year. And again, true to our philosophy of integration, it is a, a fully integrated program. So we utilize the Metro Parks and we utilize the recreation centers in the community. But with that many people coming to participate, we can always use volunteers to kind of help us keep the Keep the game going. Exactly. And what number should they call if they want to volunteer? 216-696-2716. Director, I want, that is all we have for this Thank episode you. of Age Friendly Cleveland. Thank, Thank you for you so joining much. us. Uh, we're going to have more episodes like Great. this. So I'm going to tell the people out there, make sure you tune in to TV20 because we'll have more age friendly episodes to keep you educated out there. For TV20, I'm Enrique Correa. We are Cleveland. <laughs>